As it turns out, I need to download uh, Lineage OS Nougat so that I can uh, work on one of my advanced projects of upgrading a device from one Android version to another. And I thought while I was doing that, maybe I could redo the uh, Android Nugget building portion of the uh, basics course, particularly because of the uh, poor video quality. So a lot of comments on that, and hopefully this will be helpful to you. I'm still going to be leaving the old uh, video series material available for anybody that wants to go over it, and especially in case I miss something while I'm going back over it now. Um, a lot of this stuff may be really familiar to some of you and uh, may be completely new for others, so I'm just going to cover all the basics just to make sure. Whenever you want to build a custom ROM, whether it's Lineage OS or AOKP or AOSCP or um, whatever the case may be, Typically, you need to find uh, what's called the uh, manifest file. And that manifest is um, sometimes elusive. For instance, if you uh, go to GitHub and you're looking for Lineage OS, you'll find you know, that they have their, their own uh, page here on uh, GitHub. And if you type in manifest, you'll find that they don't have any. But some, some custom ROMs will call the repository that has the manifest, the manifest repository. So sometimes that'll pop up. I just wanted to show you that in case you notice the difference there. In this case, it's under the Android um, repository for Lineage OS, which is really common as well. Uh, notice that there's different branches and in this case there's 52 branches and there's the default branch which is the one that they expect you to use. In this case uh, now Lineage 16.0 which would be Android Pi. And then they have active branches which include Oreo, Nugget, and Marshmallow. And then they have stale branches that are branches that really aren't used anymore. So uh, if you see something like this just be aware of that. In this case, we're doing Nugget, which is going to be CM14.1, which is right here. And in that, typically the README will have some form of instructions. And here you can see the instructions are very short. And if you just dragged and copied and pasted this into your terminal, it wouldn't actually build anything because it wouldn't work. That's because they expect you to already know that the rest of the instructions are in the Android open source project. So you can uh, web search, uh, DuckDuckGo, Google, whatever your method of choice is, Yahoo, Bing. Um, look for Android Open Source Project uh, establishing a build environment or downloading the source. Both of those will take you here readily. And we're just going to walk through some of these uh, instructions real quick to make sure that you're familiar with them. And this is how you would set up your machine so that you could build any Android custom ROM uh, whether it's going to be Lineage or whether it's going to be AOSP or it's going to be AOKP or OmniROM, whatever the case may be. Do keep in mind, sometimes in the README, they'll have all the steps listed out and they may have extra steps or other steps that need to be replaced. So be sure to look at the manifest uh, repository where you're going to be downloading your source to make sure that you get the uh, proper steps. If they don't have any steps, then they expect you to follow the AOSP steps. So real quick, uh, just go over some of the requirements. 64-bit machine is what you need. You need 250 gigabytes of space, 100 gigabytes for the source code just to build, and about 150 gigabytes to actually build it. You could probably do it with quite a bit less, but just to be safe, if you want to make sure that you have enough space to be able to build this, 250 gigabytes, you can do it. Uh, it says here if you're using a virtual machine, make sure you have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM or swap space. Uh, you can do it with less, um, but this is what they recommend and uh, that's a good idea. <coughs> Let's see, uh, it talks about some packages that you need. Um, we won't go too over, over those too much. Uh, notice that for Android 6 and up, they've been using Ubuntu 14.04 to build it. And they're still using Ubuntu 14.04 to build it, and at least they test on it regularly, which we'll see on the next page. I'm using Ubuntu 14.04 to build this. I've built everything from Lollipop all the way up to Android Pie using Ubuntu 14.04. Can you use something newer? Absolutely. 
I recommend you use 1404 if this is your first time because then you know it's going to work because it's been tested. Uh, some uh, information for Macintosh users, I won't cover that because I don't have one. Um, Java Development Kit, very important. We're going to be building Nugget, but anything Nugget and newer is going to use OpenJDK 8. Anything that's Lollipop or Marshmallow is going to use OpenJDK 7, and anything older than that is JDK 6 or 5. So make sure you're using or downloading the proper Java Development Kit for what you need. So let's look at establishing a build environment. This is how we actually set up our machine to get ready to build. Uh, once again, I know, I'm beating the dead horse here. This Android build is routinely tested in-house on recent versions of Ubuntu LTS. And notice here that they say 14.04. Still valid, still works great. You're welcome to use something new if you'd like. I recommend this because I know it works. Um, if you do have a newer version of Ubuntu, you can just follow these two steps right here to install the OpenJDK 8. But if you're using 14.04, you actually have to do this interesting workaround in which you would download these three files and I will show you in my downloads folder that I've already downloaded them here we got these three DEB files that we downloaded from here and then once you have those downloaded you'll run uh, the sudo apt-get update you can just drag select this paste it right in with the middle click it's gonna ask for your sudo password super user do password right? and it's going to check to make sure you have the latest uh, packages or list of packages rather. Um, some people get confused between apt-get update and apt-get upgrade. Update is say hey I want a f the latest list of what packages are available. Upgrade says I want to upgrade all of my packages to the latest version. So uh, also confusing is distribution upgrade. You might hear that, dist upgrade, and that's where, hey, I want to upgrade from Ubuntu 14.04 to the next version of Ubuntu. So just a couple things to keep in mind while you're doing this. This is going to take it just a minute here to go through uh, and check to make sure it has the latest list of packages. Hopefully, um, hopefully you have faster internet than I do, and that wouldn't take very long. So once you've done that, and you're in your downloads folder, you can actually just run this command, sudo dpackage-i, which means install, and you can say anything.deb. And when you do that, it's going to install those three Debian files into your machine. And when you do that, you're going to get an error. Now, I've already installed them on this machine, and I don't need to install them again, but I just wanted to show you this. And when you do that, it's going to give you an error, but it's going to complete and you're like, well, I don't know, what am I supposed to do now? Well, that error is solved by running sudo apt get f install. So you copy this next line, put it in. You hit enter, it'll go through and it'll install all the dependencies that you need to make that OpenJDK 8 work. And uh, I can guarantee you it does actually work. If you're like me and you have multiple versions of the OpenJDK installed, you can run this next command to update alternatives and choose which one you want to use. In this case, I have it set to number two because we're going to use OpenJDK 8, but I also have OpenJDK 7 installed and you can choose that instead. In this case, I still want to leave it with number two and be sure to do the same thing for Java C. And again, we're not doing anything new. We're just following the instructions right here from the Android Open Source project. So the next thing it says is install the required packages for building. So you can just click in here and that will highlight all that line and middle click into your terminal. You're saying hey I want to install all these packages. Notice I already have them installed so that went really really fast. For you this may take a few minutes while it downloads the packages that you need. Then it gives some instructions for older versions of Ubuntu and for Macintoshes, which again we won't cover because I don't have. And then the next step is to download the source. In here, what you'll see, if I go back to my home directory, and I'm going to ls to list what's in my home directory, we see we have bin already installed because I've already done these steps here. 
But essentially you can just drag select these and middle click to paste them into your terminal and hit enter and do these four steps right here. You're going to make this directory of a bin. You're going to add it to your path. You're going to curl or download this tool and put it in there. And then you're going to modify that tool to make it executable and readable by yourself. So that way you can actually run this tool. And that's the last thing that you need to do from the Android Open Source Project if you're building a different ROM. Now if you're going to build the Android Open Source Project you would continue with initializing and you would actually go through and you would download whatever branch you wanted which I do cover in uh, different videos there. You're welcome to take a look at those um, as far as how to choose branch. I know for sure I cover it in the uh, Android Pie excuse me, the Android Pie and the Android Lollipop videos, so be sure to check those out if you do need help with that, if you want to do Android open source project. But in our case, we're going to jump back over to Lineage OS to this manifest that we were looking at downloading. And notice the next command is this repo init command, which was the next command that we were going to run here for whatever particular branch. So. We're going to take this one, we're going to paste that into our terminal, except first we need to make a directory. So let's make directory, we'll call it lineage os underscore n, right? Sounds good to me. We'll change directory to get into there, and now we've got this highlighted, let's middle click and hit enter. And it's going to go and download this repository right here that we're looking at. Now we still have to repo sync to get all of the material for building Android. This is just downloading this current repository right here. And what it's doing is it's looking at this file right here, this default XML. And it is getting the materials ready to repo sync. And it is saying, when you repo sync, what are you going to download? It's going to say you're going to look on GitHub, you're going to look on AOSP, and you are going to download these. Uh, different repositories. You're going to look at this path. Uh, this is where you're going to put it. This is what the name of it's going to be. And this is the group. This is where you're going to get it from. And go forth and do great things. That's essentially what this folder is saying to do. So it's going to take it just a second to finish uh, downloading this repository. Receiving the objects there shouldn't take but maybe 15 more seconds. Hopefully you're not timing me. Okay, so that's done. Now comes the next big step, which is this repo sync. And of course, if you run repo sync and you have fast internet, you can just type repo sync or you can copy and paste it and you can hit enter and life is good. If you have slow internet like me, you might want to give it a JTAG and say, hey, I want to use less threads, like in my case too, because I need to be able to use the internet for other things while it's downloading. So, your choice, however you want to do that, but uh, once you hit enter, it's going to start gathering that information. So now, like I said, it's looking at default XML and saying, hey, go get that from AOSP, go get this from Lineage OS, go get this from GitHub. And it's downloading those, and it's going to put it into our Lineage OS underscore N folder. Now you notice while this is going on, it's downloading something, but you're not seeing anything in here. If you hit Control H, or you can go up to the menu and say, uh, view and show hidden files. Either way, you see we have this dot repo folder and it's actually hiding everything in here right now while it gets the stuff and once it gets the stuff then it's going to put it out here where you can see it. So uh, just wanted you to be aware of that and how that works. Uh, later we're going to talk about manifests and how we can add things to our manifest and we can do local manifests and room service branches and lots of great stuff there. So. We'll uh, let this finish downloading and then we'll come back to it.